We're here with Lorraine Cousin. She's the recipient of the Jacobs Credit Student Council Award uh, for the month of April. She's currently a researcher at the Material Science and Engineering Department, and she's working on developing flexible neural uh, devices that could help us understand how the brain works, and hopefully in the near future, help people with neurodegenerative disease. Can you tell us a little bit what this device consists on and how do you actually apply it to the brain? Sure, thank you very much. So with my advisor, Professor Shadi Dae, I fabricate flexible microelectrode arrays on a flexible polymer known as Paralete C. And then I coat these devices with a conductive uh, polymer known as PDOT, which allows for improved electrochemical properties that uh, uh, allow us to see neural response from a wide range of frequencies, from local field potentials to high gamma oscillations and single unit activity as well. And so this process for fabricating is both scalable and monolithic, which allows us to apply these devices to a wide variety of applications as well as species, from rodents and birds and non-human primates, as well as even humans we've already done. And so one such project that I've currently been working on is in songbirds, and we're working on kind of the end goal is silent communication. So being able to translate what people are thinking to say into actual words. And to this end, we've recorded zebra finches and starlings as they're singing. So they are songbirds. And we put them asleep, place my device on the cortical surface of these birds, and play back the song. And then we see how the neural response changes as the song progresses. And we do see that there is some modulation. So to prove that this is just the actual biophysiological data and not just response to noise or some type of amplitude, we reverse the audio file, so essentially making an unknown sound for the birds. And then we play that back, and we see that the uh, cognitive activity does indeed change um, with this unknown sound. And another feature of this project that's very interesting is the uh, detection of single neuro neuronal spiking activity. And this has typically been seen in commercial depth probes, with, which penetrate into the tissue of the brain. And while this is closer to the neurons, so it allows for kind of a richer set of data, this is very invasive and can cause a lot of brain tissue damage as well as biofouling, which reduces the device lifetime. So if we can prove you know, that we're seeing these single neuron activity in the surface of the brain, which is less invasive, causes less tissue damage, uh, we can greatly improve the device lifetime for eventual human implants. Well, I mean, this sounds amazing, especially like the part where you're getting into the bird screens, the very sense of life, right? But I mean, it, it's a very important field because that's really the brain is the final frontier of science, right? We still don't understand it, and if we learn about how we think and how it works, we can really benefit from not just people with neurogenital disease, but it can also make us understand who we are. As. But uh, of course, this seems like a very uh, interdisciplinary field, right? You need physicians, you need material scientists like yourself, you need a big data scientist to interpret this, all this data. So um, how do you think this is the best way to move forward and try to integrate these devices for the end goal that is help with people, right? Yes. So what's your plan for uh, trying to push forward this kind of devices? So as you said, this is an incredibly multidisciplinary project. And I think UCSD has provided a great platform to this end uh, to allow us to make these collaborations with people across the country, across the world even. And so uh, just being able to learn from these people, I'm still learning actually. There's so many different fields that go into this project. And uh, I, even from my own lab mates, they have different backgrounds and just being able to be mentored by them has been a great opportunity for me to learn and expand my knowledge. Uh, so I've been trying to learn you know, from the surgical implant techniques and how it's actually implanted, and as well as, like the, as you said, the signal processing and trying to analyze the data that we record. Uh, hopefully my end goal will be to kind of bridge the gap across all these different fields and provide a way, a form of communication, so get all the different fields talking together hopefully in form of a professorship if possible. Um, and I think, you know, to that end, just mentoring and practicing, communicating with all these different collaborators is, is a great opportunity. Well, again, uh, congratulations on the award and we hope you the best in your, of luck in your research. Thank you very much.